So, uh, we are ready for the next uh, session on this printing lecture and uh, what we have covered in the last one is this, what is printing, how close it is from the dyeing, what are the basic steps involved like printing, drying, fixing, washing, styles of printing and methods of printing, this is what we revised. Now in the lecture 2, we will look at the essentials, ingredients of a printing paste and one of the essential obviously is the color. How many types of colors are there, what interactions that they have, all that is important from the point of view of uh, printing as well like it was for dyeing, right. So if you look at the essentials, we have colorants which as we said, of course it has to be supported by what we call as a printing paste to increase the viscosity because you want to keep everything in the boundary. It is also sometimes known as thickening or thickening agent, okay. This is how the life goes and of course you would require a large number of auxiliaries to support this printing process, all right. Although we will not concentrate on uh, auxiliaries so much, we will spend some time on colorants and just revise as to what we had probably understood before uh, taking a printing class. So, in the auxiliaries, one of the auxiliaries we are quite familiar is called the wetting agent, right. The reason why we use a wetting agent is to reduce the surface tension, mix things properly because most of our action is going to be aqueous, water based and therefore what you would require is some amount of reduction in the surface tension of the systems. So penetrations becomes easy. We are also quite sure that whatever we talk about it is going to be a viscous paste and a viscous paste obviously uh, will have a difficulty in penetration. Also uh, we said there will be humectants, humectants uh, are required again as we said it is a small area, small volume, concentrations are high, how do you get the water because we have already dried the fabric. And so during the steaming process, during what we call as a fixation, whether it is a dry heat, superheated steam or atmospheric steam, you would get some moisture from the environment and that moisture is going to be absorbed as such or maybe the humectants are going to help them. The other important thing of course could be solvents particularly those dyes which are not so much water soluble, soluble or their solubility is slightly less like a dispersed dye for that matter or wet dyes for that matter, azoics for that matter and so you may require additional solvents which may help it to remain in solution form. As we said that unless and until the dye is in a molecular form, it will be very difficult for it to penetrate, diffuse into thing, unless and until we are talking about pigments, okay. Other auxiliaries would depend on what type of agent, uh, what type of dye that you actually want to use. For example, if the dye is an acid dye, you may require acids, acids in the printing paste. If it is let us say reactive dye gets fixed in alkali, alkaline medium, so you may require alkalis. If it is actually a red, you know wet dye, so you may have oxidizing agents or reducing agents as auxiliaries which we required in the whole process of printing. If you are looking at oxidation colors, you may actually have some amount of catalysts to be used. And dispersing agents would be required if we are using let us say a dispersed dye. 
because dispersed dye initially is dispersed and then of course part of it get dissolved and then get diffused and you you get uh, you know the molecular uh, form of the dye which penetrates deforming agents uh, you know form gets generated because you have lot of stirring being done and uh, it's a viscous system and if suppose lot of foam gets generated because you have a surface active agent which is called the wetting agent and you must have seen whenever you do lot of agitation in any liquid system when there is a soap or such detergents are available lot of foam gets generated it may not be the same situation here but if the foam or the bubbles get generated and they are trapped in the paste and when you actually do the printing and they would burst at wrong time and then the design will have issues so you may be using deforming agent so there are many uh, auxiliary which are definitely required based on which type of a dye fiber system you are going to be printing so uh, as i said we will spend more time on colorants because uh, they are our main stay so when we say colorants you have dyes and you have pigments now whether this colorant has to be used as a pigment in that case you will be supporting its fixation by some other mechanism but if it is considered as a dye it must go through some dissolution process and therefore its interaction is going to be important theoretically speaking the same dye which is be used for dyeing and same dye fiber interaction which is valid for dyeing process is valid for the printing process as well if there are different requirements let us see if we can find them identify what requirements are there so a colorant is a compound which has a group which we call as a chromophore some of the popular names here you can see are azo anthraquinone keto and others which i have not listed you must have seen uh, before as well so this is the stay the color is because of chromophore if the chromophores are not there the compound is not colored and that's one of the ways we can see when you reduce let's say a wet dye the chromophore is broken and the color just goes off in most cases it becomes pale so major color is lost so these are the most important part of the colorant which let's say it could be dye or a pigment chromogen is another supporting compound which obviously contains the chromophore now these type of the body main body of the dye or a pigment is the one which is which holds it holds the chromophore but also with the fiber it must be interacting that is whether we when we talk about affinity towards a fiber then some of these things can define if you look at the size of a direct dye if it is large dye the most the molecule is not a chromophore it is just a support system it goes inside and does not come out because it can form some bonds let's say hydrogen bonds with or bondable forces with the fiber molecule and so this type of a thing which is called a chromogen is the body of the whole molecule which supports the chromophore but also helps in adsorption absorption then there are oxochromes which are smaller functional groups which can be attached at para meta positions ortho positions of a dye molecule they can change the tone let's say a blue can be a different blue or a red can be a different red if we keep playing around with some of these uh, groups you know this whole science is called the molecular architecture so a dye molecule has its own architecture 
and based on these groups you can actually play around and actually synthesize a new dye molecule which may have certain interesting shade palette. And so uh, these oxychromes are also very important as well. So they will be part of our dye. And yes, most of the dyes and also uh, whether they are through printing or dyeing process would be through applied through aquaspedium. And so these solubilizing groups are the ones which help the dye to get solubilized in water. It is not that uh, we'll, any, you can solubilize them in any solvent, but we are looking at groups like SO3, Na which is sulfonate. So, so they are ionic groups attached with dry molecules. So the solubility will depend on how many such molecules are attached, what is the molecular weight of the dye. If the molecular weight is very large obviously solubilities are not going to be very high. So you have more solubilizing groups and so you do the play around with the architecture of the uh, dye molecule. Now this question is that what type of colorants are available? There are large number of colorants that are available. All of them theoretically can be used for printing as well. Directs, if you look at direct dye, what is the problem with the direct dye? It was one of the easiest dye to be dyed generally for cellulosic material, but people were not very happy with it because it was easy to dye and wash fastness was low, easy to come out of the fiber as well. It is not that every direct dye has low wash fastness, but large number of them have low wash fastness and therefore you may not like to print with direct dyes because printing is a costly process. You have to do a lot of exercise and at the end of the day, if anything wrong happens, then you are not going to be very happy. So that is one dye unless and until there are certain shades and certain types of dyes which definitely are very important and very nice, thalocyanin and base dyes for that matter. One can use direct dyes, but generally we may not. Reactive dyes, of course. I mean, reactive dyes, the name suggests that they can react with the molecules, so the wash fastness is going to be high, right? They make covalent bonds, right? And so uh, they are good uh, for us, definitely. So people would like to use uh, reactive dyes. Wet and solubilized wet are two uh, combinations which people use. Uh, for printing purposes, uh, wet is a good color. Because after you have done the whole process, it becomes insoluble and so definitely wash fastness is high and other fastness also very good. Sulfur sometimes because it's cheap you might like to use, but it's also insoluble. But most people may not like to use sulfur as such. Sulfur is used for dyeing, but nobody can stop you for using that. Acids, metal complex, basic that is the cationic dyes and dispersed dyes are the ones which of course uh, are used. And then there are pigments, organic which are the like dyes which are insoluble. So they can be pre-synthesized molecules as a pigment which will be fixed as a pigment or they could be generated in C2 while you are actually doing this whole process. The pigment get generated, that is one and inorganic of course, you can use some of the inorganic compounds which give uh, certain types of shade which may not be easily available, easily synthesized in the organic, particularly in some cases the fastness properties may be also very good and so you may like to use pigments. Let us first look at our revised is as I said this is a revision. So normally what would be happening is that you dissolve the dye in 
let us say water. So, we have water soluble dyes. So, in a normal case from solution to the fiber surface, the dye goes and then once it reaches the fiber surface that is governed by shall we say uh, affinity forces and once they reach the surface then the diffusion takes place depending upon the temperature, agitation and such conditions. In printing you have no scope for agitation, so you only believe that the dye definitely likes the fiber and therefore it just keeps moving in. right? This is what is going to be more important. And then of course, fixation, none of fixation. If it is a reactive dye, we talk about covalent bond. If it is not a reactive dye, then it could just be van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonds and what have you. It is just like trapped inside the fiber and then does not have a chance to come out. So, you can be trapping a big molecule inside the fiber. Once it has gone in, it has got certain kinds of interactions and because of that it would remain within the fiber. There are some dyes like a dispersed dyes and polyester. It just goes in from aqueous medium which was solution to a solid medium which is also behaves like a solvent. It can be anywhere. You see the property of a solvent or a solution is that the concentration of a dye at any given point and any given place is same. right? That is what the solid solution means, that is the solution. That means, the dye has no issue, it tends to go anywhere, wherever there is a space just keeps moving and hopefully the spaces are also uniformly distributed and therefore, dye also gets uniformly distributed, it behaves like a solution, but in a solid state. So, there are some uh, ways in which these interactions have been defined. You can do quantitative analysis also that how much dye will go. And isotherm means that at the same temperature, you are looking at how the dye moves from solution to the fiber, all right. Langmuir isotherms are the ones which are plotted at a constant temperature, you know. Like we are not talking about the dyeing starting at room temperature, raise the temperature to a certain degree, then hold it to a certain degree for a certain degree at a certain time and then drop it down, those kind of things. You know? It is a constant temperature. So, at a constant temperature, at an equilibrium position, how much the dye is likely to be there in the solution, how much the dye is likely to be there on the fiber. So, remember this is an equilibrium reaction, equilibrium reaction. So, this particular isotherm Langmuir believes that there are sites available on the fiber where the dye is going to go. That means, if the sites are not there anymore, the dye will not go, right. So, this is the thing. Like the example we said is a wool, silk, even nylon with an acid dye. So, these are the amino end groups where the dye is going to go. If the end groups are finished, the dye cannot go. This is what this particular isotherm believes. This is the postulate. So, let us say you have a saturation point, let us we call it D or uh, what we have called here is S which is saturation on the fiber and so this will move and after some time it will not increase right and so the sites are finished and therefore 
dyeing will not take place. And so it's got from the kinetics, you can get to this type of equation which will be valid if such interactions are there. Frondlich does not take into account as to that there are limited number of sites and therefore it cannot go. So, I believe that there is an amorphous region where it will keep going, amorphous region and the crystalline regions are interdispersed uniformly and therefore the dye would keep on going, but the rate of diffusion would depend on how much the fiber initially has the dye and how much the solution has the dye. Therefore, the concentration of the, the dye in the solution and the dye on the fiber are defined by a power equation which basically would give you some curve of a parabolic type the value of k and n would differ from fiber to fiber like dyes which do not actually depend on any site. So, fiber has many sites or areas amorphous which is just will diffuse and enter there. So, as I said some of the dyes will behave like this, but when the concentration become too high, the, the formulas may not really fit the way we want them to fit, but nevertheless mostly it is going to be true. Hmm. The same power isotherm when the value of the n becomes 1, hmm, so it just becomes d f is equal to k d s. So, it also has a saturation limit but it goes straight as a straight line so based on what type of dye that we have which does not depend on what is inside what is outside it just depends it does not get governed by the inverse flow and so the dye as long as there is a space it just keeps going more is the dye in the solution more will be the dye on the fiber in a linear way. So, when the n is equal to 1, so this formula therefore for you will be and this is the limit after this there is no space whatever the voids amorphous regions they are also filled till that time will keep doing and follow the straight line and this is what is we call as a solid solution. So, it will just keep following and after that it will become flat. The previous one is this one you are talking about. This actually does not believe, it believes that the rate of absorption will keep going down as the dye and the fiber keeps increasing and because it still thinks that there will be some bonding of hydrogen bond will formation or some kind of affinity things will be there and so rate of diffusion will keep dropping down. This one says no, if there is space it will just go without bothering as to how much dye is already present till the time when nothing is available. So, it is a question of for example, uh, students entering through this room from this gate there are enough seats available it does not matter whether 10 students are inside and that the 11th world will say let us not go because there are 10 students inside well, there are space I just go no resistance. So, it will just keep doing 
approximately like this. Of course, this slope of the curve is telling as to whether the dye loves the fiber more or the water more, right. This is also one of the reasons, although dispersed dye is not soluble in water, but still you dye from water. So, why do you dye from water? You could have dyed from a solvent where the dye is soluble. Why do you need to dye it from water where it is not soluble? Other dyes are water soluble, so it is very good. Here you do not want because the water solubility was the one which was responsible initially that the new fibers like acetate fiber, polyester fiber when they were synthesized or ma manufactured those earlier dyes would not go in and they found they are more hydrophobic. So, they have to have hydrophobic type of dyes. It is not a zero solubility, but very little solubility in water. Okay. So, if suppose we say tomorrow we want to dye from a solvent where the dye is soluble and then dye the way you dye, let us say from an organic solvent like hexane, then you will find the dye goes. But the dye fiber interaction again is the same solid solution, all right. So, it will go sit in the fiber, but what you will find is the dye because it is soluble in a solvent it is like the solvent more. So, the partition coefficient will shift towards the solvent and not towards the fiber and that is the reason why although dispersed dyes are not water soluble we still would die from aqueous systems, right. So, it is it is good that more dye goes into the fiber rather than it stays uh, in the solution. Now, this same type of colors I am not talking about pigments at the moment can be used for printing. How should they be different? One many colors are being used in the same system that of course, mixtures are being used, yes. The fastness of the dyes in general has to be on the higher side, particularly the wash fastness should be on the higher side, okay. And therefore, it will not be so much important that you have a faster rate of reaction. What will be more important is that it is uniform and properly diffused into the fiber and proper diffuse at least 50 percent of the fabric or a fiber cross section has been taken care of. And also the difficult part as we said already is the fastness of each of the mixture that you are using of the dye should be similar, it will be very difficult to be exactly same because the molecule is different. So, theoretically you can expect that every different molecule will have a different property. But if it is in the range, we always talk about some range, acceptable range, acceptable limits, then it will work. So, you will have to depend a lot on the data sheet of the manufacturer and then select the mixtures and not arbitrarily because this particular gives such a beautiful shade, let me use it. Later results will not be so nice. So, we just saying the same thing, a light fastness also because you are going to be exposed, you know. So, certain portions of the garment are exposed fully, certain portions of the garment are exposed less and if the fading is not happening at the same rate, then the shade change takes place and if the shade change takes place then you can be quite sure people can find out there is a change of shade, it does not look the same and so we would have to because such a costly process, we would like to select such dyes where light fast is high of course and also similar, you know. So, it is not easy, but you can try to find out as I said that how uh, the fading takes place in your own ways, uh, whether 
if the dye fades, this fabric will get affected. A dye gets affected anyway. But do you think there are dyes which will affect the fabric? You can try and find out. There are some bad dyes which were stopped, the manufacture was stopped at some stage. Whether the substrate affects the fading, whether the substrate affects the fading. Right? So, this is an important thing. One of the interesting case is there and you can appreciate in the light fastnesses, you are absorbing certain amount of energy. This energy is absorbed by the molecule which is called the dye. It does in any way absorbs, otherwise nothing will be seen. But you have UV light also, it is not just the visible. So, if you absorb certain energy and that energy changes the molecule, damages the molecule, then obviously fading takes place. If suppose the energy instead of the molecule actually changing itself passes on this energy to the fiber because the linkages are such that can actually transfer the energy. So, fiber if suppose some damage takes place will take place, but fiber being a large uh, volume, large mass it may be smaller. The dye is a small molecule just sitting somewhere on the surface and trying to do whatever, particularly surface. The fading will be felt on the surface. The dye which is inside the fiber deep is not even visible. So, you will not see whether it is faded or not and most probably it is not even faded. right? So, we are looking at surfaces. Printing is based absolutely on surface, you know, uh, surface interaction with our own eyes and that is how the printing takes place. And so, uh, one case for example, the cationic dyes, you can dye them on cotton also through a mordant. You can similarly print also. You can have those same dyes on acrylic fibers. Okay. Now, generally it was felt and it may have been, you may remember also, the light fastness of the basic dyes on cotton were found to be relatively poor compared to even direct dyes, you know, light fastness we are talking about. But the same dye, if applied on acrylic fiber, has shows higher dye, higher light fastness because you make an ionic bond there, it is easily, relatively more easily able to transfer the energy to the fiber, a dye feels safe and so fiber dye interaction can actually play some role in the fastness, defining the fastness, light fastness also. Wash fastness you understand very easily, there is a bond made, less bonding, more bonding covalent bonding, ionic bonding, they will all play a wash fastness a role in, in determining what is the wash fastness, but light fastness also gets affected. You can read more about it. The wash fastness of course is important, higher the wash fastness better it is as far as the printing is concerned, but you would be also very much interested in staining resistance, staining resistance is important because when you wash some of the dye solution during washing will flow over the areas where you do not want it to be there. And this, you must remember stain is generally difficult to remove, easy to happen because the equilibrium is in the favor of the staining because the color is more in the solution let us say and there is no color on the fiber. Although temperatures of course are different, you are not giving the right pH, you are not giving uh, catalysts, anything else. Therefore, we do not expect so much to happen, but stain is a stain and that is what you have to worry about. And so, one would like to have such dyes which do not stain easily, you know. You will have to wash sometimes also, no? when you wash the same same garment, it has got position, portions which are white, portions which are light and so any time the dye can ex get exchanged. So, the staining is an important part, you will like to choose. Perspiration fastness of course, uh, 
are important because and rubbing as well. So, if you have dyes which are uh, uh, not soluble, which have not reacted, which after process would be available in particles, even small or dimers, trimers and, and larger things, which become insolubilized after the process is over, they may have a tendency to get out also because they may be on the surface. Let us say azoic, okay? they may remain on surface and so the problem or the indigo for example, you know, you know the denim. So, affinity is less, does not penetrate more, but you like it anyway and so rubbing fastness. Unless and until there is a fashion, it may not be very good. In the case of dispersed dye, you should be bothered about a sublimation fastness as well. You see, um, for the same reasons, the sublimation fastness is not very high. The wash fastness may be good because dispersed dyes are not water soluble. And let us say you have done the printing with dispersed dyes on nylon, which you can do. When you store also at temperatures which are not very high, but let us say go up to 50 degrees in some cases. You may see sublimation very low, but it is there, it is good enough to stain and that is it, your print is over. The problem is not that how much dye you have lost, you have lost the whole fabric or a garment which you may have uh, paid for. So, this is the general question is that do the dyes have all these fasteners very good? No, they are not. Sometimes the shade, you have to compromise because the shade desires that such dyes must be used, otherwise you will not obtain, then you have to compromise. But everything not being same and not in your favor, still you have to work around. If you have the choice, you better exercise the choice. That is how we would like to occur. So, let us say wet dyes, we, they are generally used for printing without any doubt. Okay. Why? Okay. They have all kinds of fastness which are very good, very important from the printing point of view. You look at the wash fastness, you look at light fastness, all kinds of fastness. They are very nice dyes, but they are expensive. So, you can appreciate anything which does everything right will be expensive, not just as a dye, but also the whole process. You have reduction, oxidation, all that has to be done. So, they are good for printing, cost is high, so no problem, you should be able to use them. Which type of a fabric, fiber, fabric can be printed? with wet dyes. Just give me some answer. What type of fiber fabric? Cellulosic. Okay, very good. So, this type of a dye, the way it is, can be used for cellulosic, cotton, viscose, etc. If suppose somebody says, I want to use it for wool and silk. Is the dye has a problem with the wool and silk? So, what is the problem? Alkali and the process is a problem, right? If suppose you can solve this problem, then you should be able to dye. That is why people made something called a solubilized wet dye. The same dye has been changed that you have now groups attached they make the dye soluble. So, these are sulfuric esters and sodium salts of sulfuric acid because every time you make uh, these compounds, you got to make a salt so that they remain ionic and so water soluble. So, it is the same dye as before, just that it is the structure has changed. So, because of this particular group that has been added, you are now here, this is the change from the previous dye and suddenly 
this dye can be used on any fiber which is which is hydrophilic okay so you can go on silk you can go on cotton you can go on rayon you can print on uh, nylon no issues but why should you that's a separate question cost is very high fastness do you like to have any questions on the fastness do you think the fastness will be different it should not be is the same molecule if the molecule because at the end of the day this will become the same dye after final little oxidation cycle it is the same dye and so this is what we call as engineering a molecule to your own advantage but cost is high and of course the pellets that are available color pellets that are will pellet that is available is not as large as wide wide as the wet dye but uh, cost is quite prohibitive but for printing purposes if you really want it they are there so all substrate can be used reactive dyes became very popular right and also for dyeing as well as for printing because you have let us say something called this so you have a dye and a reactive group of course there would be a bridging group and everything else there is a chromophore you can see this also will behave like one and so uh, reactive dyes everybody loves them so we spend some time here before we they are water soluble no issues on that because they have various kinds of groups which sulfonic acid groups is attached so what is the process the process will be first you dissolve then you make a paste after making a paste you do whatever and then it must bond so you must provide a condition at a right time if you provide the condition of fixation at the wrong time then you get a wrong results so the let's say it requires alkaline condition the alkaline condition must be provided at the time of fixation if suppose the alkaline condition right alkaline condition is provided in the paste itself a paste is stored for a long time is not made every minute and not easy to make also it requires energy and effort and therefore what we'll do you will provide alkaline conditions at the right time this particular dye is called a dry dye chloro trizenyl system sometime known as the m type of reactive dye this is not used for printing generally it's too reactive a lot of wrong things will happen right thing will happen later so you want to create a condition let's say it will fix at 60 to 80 degrees centigrade then at room temperature it will not fix so whatever kind of material that you have whatever anything else that you have there will not nothing will be happening at that time it will happen at the time so you might prefer the this dye where one of the chlorine has been substituted by an amine so reactivity has gone down and uh, time required temperature required will be high but for printing it's a good idea saving time is not a good idea so these are some of the reactive groups as we said the reactivity should be less fastness obviously will be high and this would two things which we you know quickly talk about the fastness if the reactive dye has reacted with fiber it makes covalent bond 
so should not have any fastness issue as far as the wash fastener is concerned. But if it has not reacted, then you have a problem. So, if you are looking at a cotton, where does it react? To the hydro hydroxyl groups. Whenever there is a water, there is a hydroxyl group. So, it will react with water also. If it reacts with water, those let us say one chlorine in a monochlorotriazine type of a dye was there, this I react with water, a dye will not react, it will just be there. You wash it, it will come out. So, fastness property would depend on how have you actually proceeded, whether most of the dye has reacted or most of the dye has not reacted or reacted somewhere else or in some other form, then you have a problem. Then this question of substantivity versus reactivity. So, you want it reactive, again moderate like you said I do not want a dichloro, substantivity also moderate that if at all it has hydrolyzed and is available when I do good amount of washing, it should come out. So, that the customer does not complain, it should come out while you are processing. If it is high substantive dye, then it will have different ways of bonding other than the covalent bonding also like and it will stay and keep coming out every time you wash. And so, the wash fastness sometimes reported may not be 5, it will be less than 5. How can you have reactive dye less than 5 means what? It means you have done bad job, dye has reacted with water and is available on the fiber and so the new molecules will have moderate reactivity and moderate substantivity, so that can come out. Which substrates can be printed with? Little louder, which substrate? Yeah? Cellulose. Of course, they were designed for them, but wool, silk can be and you do not really have to go to the alkaline uh, pH also they can react and so hydrolyzed dye issues will also not be faced with silk and wool. So, they are one of the best actually in India also a large amount of silk printing is done by reactive dyes and so they actually have show better fastness. They can react with free amine, amino groups and groups that are present in approximately neutral medium. You can do an acidic medium, but neutral is the best and so no hydrolyzed dye because hyd hydrolyzed dye is formed in alkaline medium. I think today uh, we will like to stop here and uh, next time when we meet take it further, right? Thank you.